G'day guys, welcome along to another vintage MRE review. What we've got here is one of the original brown bag MREs. Uh, this was kindly sent in by a very uh, generous subscriber, Michael Mitchell, who uh, provided um, four of them actually. So we've got a few of these vintage ones to get through. So hope it brings out some memories, either uh, Possibly good or bad if you were in the service back then and got to experience one of these. Uh, this particular one is menu number three, chicken stew. Uh, packaged by the Right Away Foods Company in McKellen, Texas. Now these dark brown MRE bags uh, I believe came about in 1981 or when MREs as we know them first started for the US. Now, uh, they went through a couple of slight changes since 1981, right the way up through to, I believe, 96 is when they went to the, the light tan bags. Um, having a quick look on MRE info, we can see that this one here, Menu 3 Chicken Stew, can only be from 1988 through to 1995. So uh, we've got a few years to play with, but either way, it's got some age to it. <laughs> Alright, as with all of these brown bag, dark brown bag MREs, you've just got the tear notch at the top. And it probably would have been a bit easier for me, just using a knife, never mind. Here we go. Straight away I noticed a difference from this one as compared to the 1983 vintage. Uh, this feels like it's got more in it. Straight away we have the size of box, or entree boxes that we're more used to versus the 1983 version and the, uh, the half size box with the uh, packages folded over in half inside it. So first up we have mixed fruit. Diced peaches, diced pears, grapes, pineapple, etc etc. Cherries. Okay. And interesting the I'd say that we do have a date code there, but um, it's quite hard to tell what it is because we've got seven digits. So could be 1994 potentially, but let's have a look at some of the other things and we'll get a fair idea. It's a main entree, chicken stew. There we go. Here's a date code 4067. So this was the 67th day of 1994. So we've got ourselves a 20 year old MRE. <laughs> cool, so we're going up. It's uh, the last one I had was, or well, last vintage one I had was from 1983. So I was 31 years old, and yeah, we've got another date code of 4228, so yeah, 1994. These crackers, thankfully, seem like they've got quite a good vacuum on them. The dead giveaway with the 31 year old uh, crackers that I had was, when you look at the edges, you see how that's nice and tight? The other one was just a, uh, like a wee triangle, like a fillet going down from the edge. So, these could be in pretty good nick. Have a beverage base powder. And, interestingly, it does not tell you what flavor it is. <laughs> That's just a beverage. Oh, cool. Check this out. Oh. Flameless ration heater, but it's very different. 
Well, it's not very different, but it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty old school. I believe this might be back around close to when they first started including these uh, ration heaters. Ah. G shots. <laughs> Alright, so you got a little cardboard thingamy, um... And... Okay. I think it's just the same, you still get this, this wet. Um, it doesn't look like you have to open it up or take it out. But we can see... that the contents, or the, the metals and things, that make up the heating elements have... started to come out, so this will be really interesting to see if this uh, can perform still after all this time. I believe these things only have a shelf life around the five year mark and things start to go downhill pretty quick. Peanut butter. 20 year old peanut butter. Stone Mountain GA. What is that? Is that uh, Georgia? Hmm. Oh, classic, a Mars bar. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. That's going to be really interesting to see. Oh, 20 years has done to it. Even though it wasn't that long ago in the whole scheme of things, even the, the packaging still looks old school. Hmm. And... As opposed to the 1983 MRE, we've actually got ourselves here a, what we know as a modern MRE spoon. Just the same as what you get today. And uh, that is a good thing. Now our accessory pack. We have a teeny tiny little bottle of Tabasco sauce which still is liquid sometimes with these older ones you can find that over time just I guess with the constant rolling around the bottle that it tends to become a little bit um, petrified around the outsides and becomes more of a solid that's too cute We have sugar, moist towelette, our uh, MRE toilet paper that we know and love, and check that out, an actual box of chocolate scum. Usually what you find nowadays is they've got quite a cheap, you know, just plastic covering on them, but uh, this is neat, own little box. Non dairy creamer, Taster's Choice Coffee, MRE matches, and a sachet of salt. As we can see, despite being 20 years old, we well and truly have stepped into the modern era of MREs as we know them uh, for the US side of things. We've got our main entree. Uh, mixed fruit side. I'm assuming we don't need to heat that up. Uh, usual crackers, spreads, chocolate bar. Nice accessory pack, I think. You know, <laughs> these two things alone make that accessory pack uh, worth gold to me. It's almost a shame to open these things. Um, and a flameless ration heater, the all important FRH. So, Let's try and attempt to get the Sontre heating up and we'll have a look at the, the rest of the things in more detail. Next up, we'll get our Sontre out of the box. Okay, in a dark green pouch. Uh, used to seeing the normal sort of tan pouches, but other than that, it's pretty much the same and the FRH, all the instructions are basically the same the only difference is the uh, 
the way the heating pad's been constructed here. So we'll whip off the top. Slide the entree down. <laughs> okay, you can see all of the, the filings collecting at the bottom there from the FRH, so mm -hmm. this will be interesting. We want to keep the heating pad and the entree above those lines. And we'll put in our water at the top here. There we go. Push it all down. Fold the top over. And we'll just put it horizontal for a second. Just to get that pad wet. And we'll hold on for hold on to it for a tick here. You would ordinarily be struggling to hold on to this because it would be so hot. I can hear something. It's kind of like watching paint dry, but yeah, I don't hold up much hope. For that getting as hot as we need it to but we'll see so while we wait and uh, hope that that entree heats up let's make up a brew and a drink on dairy creamer Sure. Smells good. And we'll go for our mystery flavor this let's double check oh okay I'm wrong grape and we've got a date code of 3120 on that one so it looks like this had been manufactured in 1993 putting our water first about 12 ounces Smell that grape. Well, artificial grape flavour. Smell. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. If you watch my other vintage. MRE review, you'd know the crackers were the undoing of me <laughs> in a big way. So I'm very, very keen to hear if we get the vacuum. Oh, here we go. Look at that. All in one piece after 20 years. What do they smell like? Hmm. Well, they do smell like they've got something going on. It's, oops, it's not your normal, you know, couple of year old MRE cracker smell, but um, 
It's by no means bad, so great relief. <laughs> so while we're doing with the crackers, I uh, don't hold up as much hope for the peanut butter. Looks all right, doesn't it? Smells all right too. Well, I'll be. Yeah, tell me, there's anything wrong with that? <laughs> what a shocker! The Mars bar. Oh, solid milk chocolate. Okay, I didn't actually know. But, um, you know, I thought Mars bars were Mars bars, if you know what I mean. I didn't realise they did normal solid chocolate. Uh, it's 20 years old. Hmm. There's a bit of a funky smell coming from it, but... I'll tell you what, I've had worse that's been a lot newer. <laughs> Not bad at all, it's just lightly oxidized. What else do we have? Oh, of course. Yeah, mixed fruit. Yeah, perhaps this was supposed to get uh, heated up too, but... We'll keep it cold. Twenty years old. Oh, smells okay. Ooh. Hmm. Well. <laughs> um. I don't know. Let's have a closer look. So, uh, quite a lot of liquid. in there, very runny. It's kind of like a fruit salad, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's not meant to be this dark, I would say. Mmm, it's kind of, no, don't worry, I haven't tried it yet. It's kind of got a vinegary taste, or vinegary smell, I should say, to it. Which I suppose you can forgive it for that. It's 20 years old. One of our chicken stews had about 15 minutes to heat up. And uh, there is actually some heat here. It's going to be. Oh, interesting. It's got quite foamy in there. I think you know, all that cardboard that was containing the active ingredients is uh, soaked and uh, falling apart, I think. But yeah, interesting foamy stuff on there. <laughs> the smell is pretty common to what you. Uh, what you get with these things, it kind of smells like a burnt out motor or a short circuit, an electronic circuit or something like that. Uh, which is essentially what's going on. Okay, well we're just waiting for the rest of that uh, entree to heat up. Let's just have a look at some of the things that were happening in 1994. We had the uh, Tonya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan dramas with the uh, figure skating scandal. Um, we had the uh, Channel Tunnel open between England and France. We had the infamous OJ Simpson Ford Bronco chase. The, uh, <laughs> the slow speed pursuit that uh, made it all over the news. 
Uh, movies coming out were uh, Forrest Gump, classic, Pulp Fiction, and uh, popular in music at the time was uh, the likes of Sheryl Crow, Pearl Jam, and Boys to Men. So it's, yeah, it's not super, super old, but, uh, you know, even by ration standards, it's, it's 20 years, so it's got some legs. Here we go. It's reasonably hot. I never expected a 20-year-old FRH to work at all. Here's our chicken stew. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. <coughs> mm. Wow. Okay. <sighs> I was thinking rather naively because everything else had gone so well that the chicken stew would be okay too. Um, there's something funky going on with it. Yeah, it doesn't smell quite right. <laughs> anyway, let's start with the safe stuff. Coffee. Yeah, no surprises there. It's normal coffee. Our great beverage powder. Cheers. And again, I wouldn't expect anything weird with that. Let's go for the crackers. Like I said, these did have a slightly weird smell, kind of a hard to describe, waxy type of flavour. Well, smell. Yeah, and it does translate into the aftertaste, but that's not bad. Peanut butter. <laughs> the peanut butter. It tastes absolutely fine. You'd never imagine. 20 years. Unbelievable. I expect it to be... Oh, I'm glad actually it didn't come with the cheese spread, because... Yeah, the cheese spread just um, it becomes a bit of a disaster. So far, the crackers, peanut butter, absolutely fine. Could eat the whole thing. Chocolate. Yeah, it's a kind of a weird, almost off milk smell to it, but. Tastes fine. Not bad at all. Let's try some of the... Fruit salad here. Or mixed fruit. Mmm. As for the chicken stew... Um, you can see, oh, oh the smell, <laughs> this is coming right at me, you can see our bits of chicken, carrot, potato, <laughs> okay, so, uh, Really, it's got one of those smells, again, that just makes you want to retch when you smell it. And, uh, you know, something with chicken in it, it is pretty risky. I, uh, I did try the 1983 uh, chicken meal, well, chicken a la king. And uh, I feel like I sort of got away with that fairly luckily. But honestly, if you, you smell this, it's... Uh, it's impossible to describe. It's it's kind of vaguely the smells you'd ex expect, but it's got this real pungent afternote that just gets straight into the back of your throat and makes you want to retch. So for the moment, 
I think this will be about as close as I'm getting, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. One thing I do want to do is, even though it seems a bit of a shame to open this uh, cute little bottle of Tabasco, I will put a little bit on a cracker. Well, wow. oh, there we go. And there we have it. Tabasco sauce. I think it can uh, last forever. And apparently they're not including these in the new uh, MREs anymore. They've gone with a powdered you know, chili substitute. That's a real shame. Because, uh, what do you think? It's pretty awesome. I'll uh, refresh the palette. Copyright 1993 on this pack. Well, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> look at that. It's got little ears on it. Oh, it's, it's yeah, it's got something funky going on. These were not in any other kind of wrapper. They were just in the box, so. You know, you can see light through there. That's been 20 years worth of funkiness going on. Oh, that's uh, pretty tough. There we go. Hmm. It's kind of weird, it's like it's lost its gumminess. It's almost just like biting into a normal... Mm. Take that out, like biting into a normal candy. So uh, I guess it makes a hell of a lot of sense to not put them in these boxes uh, you know, for longevity purposes, but yeah, it's kind of cute that that <laughs> was in there at all. So anyway guys, that has been the USMRE menu number 3 from 1994. As you can see, we're in the modern age of MREs, and I think if this had been newer, then I would have been quite happy with it as a as a meal. If you know what I mean. If everything had been uh, totally edible, it's not bad. You got your mixed fruit, your chockey, uh, the stew itself. Well, it's seen better days now. Um, you know, nice big chunks of vegetables, a lot of meat in there. Uh, Anybody that experienced this one in uh, the service back in the day, the uh, chicken stew, then uh, please chuck it in the comments what you thought of it. To me, it looks very much like the chicken a la king from 1983. But, mm. but there we go. So the boss isn't here at the moment, and uh, as she wouldn't be sampling something so old, we'll have to catch her on the next one. But uh, thanks very much, Michael Mitchell, for supplying this, and thanks everyone uh, for watching. We'll see you on the next one.